Hello, this is Hakuda Bean, and today we are going to SCP-6500. We are continuing with the Warrior Path. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. The Wanderer's Library. They crawl through the door or in the desk, trying the cool sound of Koya... Keakoi, a for a soft warm bed and of whistling blue grass. There were timbers beneath, not rotten but firm and polished. Even as in fully understand what until she stood up when she didn't understand at all. She was standing in a scrub line clearing, which was simultaneously the an ornate it at the at the in a AM. The grandest library she had ever seen. A tree line of jam-packed shelves rising up to a storm unclouded calling oh, ceiling. Sorry, my hair was in the way. A warm breeze carried the scent of ancient paper and the sound of distant fighting to her as she turned to face her comrades. Oh, Cory was still in, on the grass. She looked up apologetically. I don't think even that his hand in the sword's a placeholder and reached down to carry her friend. Hope most of your weight was magic. They pass into the forest of stacks, walls of literature stretching in every direction. They promenaded through a series of colossal arcades, pausing at each junction to watch for supernatural traffic. Over the course of 15 minutes, they encountered an animate skeleton pressing its finger runs into a two-meter blob composed entirely of eyes, screaming PRAXIS over and over again. A squat, four-eyed green creature pulping an army of paper mache cockroaches with an enormous leather um, some sort of immense serpent dinosaur creature which they ran away from too quickly to see what it was up to. And no less than three different wild-eyed robed men struggling in the grip of this embodied arm which reached from the ceiling to throttle them. Okori trailed her arms behind her, lightly caressing the spines of every book within reach. She was breathing deeply, her eyes rimmed with tears. What's that? Placeholder asked, and Evan has shifted her stance to carry the mage one handed. The other, her hand snapped to her waist with practice ease. There was a rush of air and a single shot echoed through the wooden onion. The slug impacted a swung all in cluster of nerves in mid leap, and both disintegrated in a spectacular spurt of blood and metal. Yeah, said Ibanez, lowering her service weapon. What was that? Did you even aim? Placeholder knelt to this who examined the wreckage of the spider thing, sang the f a sword on the floor beneath between them. Terrifying. And loud, Elcori groaned. Put me down for you that again. Even as gently lowered her to the floor, the mage shuddered, feeling, I don't know if it's better, but even as swung around, finding the pommel of the sword with her left hand and bringing it up in one fluid motion. Another ball of flesh was falling from the distant ceiling, and she slapped her way with the flat of the of blade. Pull! she shouted. And snapped off a second shot. This time, the creature carried into one of the shelves, tracing a bloody itra along a set of encyclopedia. Oh, said placeholder. Shit. He was staring down aisle on an army of sanguine spiders nodding together to bar their passage. For even as could regain her feet, however, the current of flesh was violently flung across and scattered across, across the stacks. A tremendous red backed millipede, bigger than a convoy of buses, is end on end. 
reared up and hurled the jerry things high into the air. It sucked them into a gnashing split down the middle of a tra gigantic round head, then snatched the stragglers up from the ground with an unearthly squeal. As the last red Edmar Arsehold disappeared down to gullet, its steep deep brown belly burned to scarlet, and the sound of boiling flesh filled the air. It belched a thin plume of flame over its unrounded shoulders and sat back down to loom over the three of them. Even as glanced at placeholder, now cowering behind beside Okori's own form. This count as a dragon, you figure? Jellers! The gargantuan Horus squealed. In my library, you shall not! It's been endly the limbs splayed out suddenly, and its segmented trunk crashed down onto the overgrown floorboards. Oh, it was bother. Even as so, uh, the phrases sort out between them. I'm not here to gel anything. She kept what she felt was a surprisingly even tone for addressing a train size that tree. I'm here for one single piece of information, and trust me, you really do want to help me find it. I'm a docent, and you have a fight nitwit scrambling back to its feet. Lean gets the sacks for our support. I should tell you to niblets for our suggesting it. And pause. Niblets sort is it giblets. At any rate, I don't trust your kind. I don't abide thieves and book burners. Would you rather abide as I'd spiders, even as kicked the nearest month? Ultra monstrosity, the millipede snapped it out there with a flick of what unspined or leg. Are you a spider abider? Creature reared back again, and for an instant, even as thought she was about to join the spires in its fiery stomach. Then surprisingly a gentle chittering filled the air as she came to the feverish realization that it was laughing. Spider abider! You're not all bad, it hissed. I'm the eighth archivist. My friends called me the rounder pete. It's T. If our eyelids contracted, you may call me the Eighth Archivist. Awesome, even as low the sword. You want to tell me why the library is on fire, metaphorically speaking? Metaphor nothing. The archivist scattered outside to, re to reveal the largest interior space a quarry had ever seen. Row on row of desks, shelves, tables, and chairs. Chases lounge and couches, lanterns, braziers, magazine racks, and podiums. It was expanding and contracting like a living, breathing thing. As she stepped out from under the stacks, she suddenly saw why. A sky skyscraper's worth of overhanging galleries were crawling with an endless web of, re of flesh as she read spiders, intertwining their quivering a nerve of appendages together to Arm a network of gore and gristle. The Grand Hall, Okori breathed. Sparks leapt from Spire to Spider, pulling even as in mind of. Fuck me, oh. Or advice. You want on to tell me why there is a, an arachno brain in the forming in your lobby? The ran wheeze wheeze, expanding contracting like a bellows. The old magic is dying, the ways are open and we cannot shut them. Things are coming through the. Ooh, things we don't want, things which have been waiting. What sort of things place Lord Adron Evanes in the atrium? Four patrons ejected for theft, destruction of library property, conception of library property, conception of other patrons. The gigantic globe alert head swung up as a new smattering of spiders burst bloodily into being far above. And out was monstrosities, of course. Things which only exist to transition out from out to in. This is one of those things. It's when green orbs narrowed. The grand hall expands to suit its contents. That's all very e e convenient. 
Not so much right now. Or he's stood up shakily. You guys on a first name basis? It's the halfwit, brain of Uberoth. Rather repeats spat. This fight was a massive of a was a massive writing in black. It sizzles on the green boards beside and with the scent of rusted metal. And a theme to knowledge. Oh Uberoth the empty. Uberoth the senseless web. Uber at the Mall of Trackless Midnights. That's a dude's name, said Avenes. The archive of his collected grissom zipper of teeth together. What? Uberat? Avenes stared and trance at the multiplying meat neurons. Sports guy I from the 80s? Might I used to follow baseball? The apex of the hall was now concealed above a false feeling of rippling red. Living with blind, more ironic mirth. Peter Uberoth, she said. The spiders were fructifying in the sacks. A gecko of docents were gamely brushing them down with brooms. But about 90% and sure. Yeah, said Flysolder. I don't think this is him. Even as squatted down and tucked her boots tight. You a climber, buddy? The rider Pete. Its coils were condensing. Ever upward. She just played to a starting position. And, and how tough is your chitin? The archivist was shuddering with anticipation. Tough enough for what you're considering. What are you considering? Elkari said in the moment before Ibn S kicked off the floor onto the massive male beat's back. The beetle on to the net here is the fourth column and they shot up into the Avenue's face beneath the congealing brain. Ibn S gripped an arm spine with one hand and a blade with the other. It was making a glow a dull white a glow. I'd hide if I were you, she called down to her companions as Runner Pete spiraled upward toward or is a welcoming wall of organic filigree. Even as a sand, the immense arthropods rising trunk, hopping from sec hopping from section to accordion section as they crawled across golden and, and as the nines, swinging from spine to spine to climb um, with endless marble or and ancients. The sky was raining spiders and bugs. The runner pea caught out the form with its teeth, tearing them to shreds or gulping them down, and plucked the ladder out of the, out of the air with its serpentine and tongue, clutching them to its belly with, with astonishing tenderness. Once it snapped the grimoire out of freefall and swallowed it whole. Eating library property, even as shouted over the blood in her ears. I have suffered tracks for. Tracks, the Iranopi it wheeze. Some of my flutes are excellent for conservation. Her retort was cut off by sudden and tearing at her hair. She pulled her out of wriggling spider and smashed it against the archivist's flanks. Okay, she howled. Operation Fuck Spires is a big go. They swerved through a, a balustrade gallery. Another mindless, malicious thing hurled itself towards her. She swung hard and the spider slid across along the flat of the blade. Twin slits opened up in its superating ingress, and she flung it at hard into an ordered it called Stankian. It exploded. The rat repeats colossal visage. Rolled around to glare at her. Swords are not clubs. Baseball all, all on the brain. She adjusts her grip as they whip through with the squirming stacks. I don't even know what that is. She split the next three leaping horrors cleanly in half. The sky is a vanishing into the archivist's hide. They pulled herself on top of its head and they dashed between the shelves. She knelt for balance between the shining and crystalline eyes, held the sword out of up behind her and began to hum as quivering shapes bounded towards her from all sides. This 
is amazing artwork. A little violent, but I don't think that's really the main part. It's just really cool to see that. The next few minutes were red blur as even as hacked and slashed and otherwise eviscerated her attackers. They exploded back into the Grand Hall in a haze of uh, Chela Aseric Isra, and she danced on the archive's back in a drunken, like a drunken Errol Flynn. She spun one unlucky lump of meat to, on the point of her, her sword. It tried to clamber that on the brain and she whisked all eight of its legs off before flicking it away. It struck the uh, tiles beside the ground pounding and doctors like a hunk of wet hamburger. She swung wide and caught five of the creatures at once, sweeping them into the ground under Pete's gullet and giggling maniacally. A dozen sorry stuff, the space for the ceiling ha had been was finally in reach. The archivist kicked off the wall and crossing up the he opened vault like an ar ar architectural rib, upside down. Even as clambered onto its belly and had sword aloft, tearing in through the arachnid sky and bleeding in a torrent of shimmering crimson. She was laughing so hard she nearly lost her balance. A curious tonic tittering, which might have been the rounder pea laughing as with her, her echoed across the grisly gap. A chunk of falling mace and tore through the organic fabric, striking the archivist back with a mighty harumph and release a voucher of flame just, into, just inches from where Evan is step. Uh, she lurched back and swung the sword, a gesture of purely futile instinct. And a rush of force exploded from the leading edge, catching the fire and incorporating it. The sword now gleamed with a blinding white light, and even as broad around in a wide arc, a firestorm... Okay, we're back for now. <sighs> the sword now gleamed a blinding white light, and even as broad around in a wide arc, a firestorm twirled through the hall, and it could and a pea of veined arachnids burst into flame as one unwriting, dying an entity. The rounder peed, finished its transfer to the opposite wall, and thrust its four parts into the empty air, moving back and forth to catch the sheets of falling, burning spiders. Even then, it scrambled back onto its head to carve up the remaining horrors as they tumbled down, cackling and whooping and posing. I, I caught untra- uh, Apostle. These are really weird words. Placeholder and Ilkori retreats through the sacks as a waterfall of cooked gray batter and boiling claret splattered the, splatter the floor. The round repeats scared her down the final story to the ground level carnage, and even then swung down on one of its legs like a monkey on a vine. She landed it and shaking her first on the final surviving. Ivan Spider, crashed an apparent terror on top of the main circulation desk. It blew apart like a red jelly donut. The doctor stared at her. She was covered, plastered, head to toe, so enveloped in blood. Her vermilion and visage split open in a dazzling white smile, and she bellowed. I love stories for doubling over with laughter so fierce and full throat that obviously hurt. Sparks danced and fizzled out on the brown of its slick chitin, and it snatched a few more of the streaming aiming air with its black and cinnamon tongue. It was whistling soft and low, so cradling dozens of uh, crisis manuscripts and monographs with the tenderness of a doubting parent. Sheesh. The archivist recoiled from the blade. It, I wouldn't speak that at, at tongue um, if I could, which I can't. It growled. No one here can help you. You must go down to the source.
even as as nodded. That tracks. What's the source? It told her. Oh, said Placeholder, let's not go there. We have to, Okori was sifting through the nearest shelf, visibly drawing strength from its contents. It's where the story ends. She noticed him smiling at her and blushed. Quest, story, same difference. Even as created her teeth. If we get it this translated and, and, and all it says is peace on earth, I'm going to break something. Maybe everything. Perhaps that's what the sword does, placeholder muse. Make you so pissed off you become the ultimate at warrior. She ignored him, addressing the archivist instead. I assume there's a way we can use? Not a way. A wound. Or is this supposed to be a wound? I'm not really sure. It's superlated. An infected scar, the only souvenir of an unwise alliance long broken. It lies beyond the sevenfold portal, which will shut behind you when you enter. The library is connected to all places of knowledge, but it faltered. This connection was not made willingly, and we would sever it if we could. I've been meaning to ask about that, said Placeholder. The library is connected to all possible realities, isn't it? It's a multiversal constant. How is it falling apart just because our reality's magic is dying? The tremendous head cocked to one side as if considering this must also be multiversal unsent or near enough. Personally, I blame you. That's fair. Placeholder wins, so I guess sending us some serious help is out of the question. Yes, yeah, some repeat scratch the floorboards. This may soon be the last bastion of magic in all creation. I won't risk it on your fool's errand. Even as scowled. We're trying to save the world here. You can give us an inch. I've given and you more than I would have on any other day. The archivist reared its, reared its bulk up against the ceiling as to impress upon them their relative bargaining power. Even as it dropped the E.K. Corey a robe, now saying the Vermilion, and examined her still streakous reflection in the bright blade. Alright, she said. Show us where the portal is. The round of each its head, shaking a few stray a, a scarlet a droplets free. I need only curse you to find it yourself. It drew a deep breath, and I stared into the amber glow, but at the heart of its its ripped throat as it chanted. I hide thee now to Uhal's unkind, where to your sorrow you shall find in grimoires black on, on even shelves the ancient pit within yourselves. I'm sorry, it added after a moment's pause. Okori and Placeholder immediately walked away, even as, as strained against the sudden force impelling her to follow. Oh, pulling gets it like a swimmer in the tide. She asked, What if this is all that's left? The archivist's his eyelids contracted almost imperceptibly. Even if you're right, if we don't succeed, there won't be a single centimeter of anomalous anything left outside of this place. Even as gestured with great effort, at the Grand Hall, in the midst of a runaway expansion as the surviving wanderers congregated at the scene of the bloodbath. What if everything dies but the library? Then the library will be in left, the round of it said flatly. It swung around to join the throng as even as finally succumbed to the urge to take her leave. They filed through well tread corridors, well kept gardens, and a muddy as common rooms in a lucid trance, clusters of patrons breaking around them like waves on the east shore. They plunged deeper and deeper into the heart of the library, minds blank and stepping surely and precisely and wholly unconscious past age worn galleries, the crafted archives, and disused studies. When at last they reached a jet black vault door, they were alone. 
Okori depressed a hand to the iron, and the outline of a larger hand unfurled in gold brocade. The door opened. The air changed. The door opened. Their hearts raced. The door opened. All moments of time became one. The door opened. Time stood still. The door opened and they walked through. Almost as an afterthought, the door opened to admit them. I hate magic, said even it, as Okori patted her on the shoulder. The room beyond was a diminished reflection of the grand hall, blackened and pitted with age. Fire and rot. A beam of pure dark light shone down on the shattered tile floor from an aperture in the ceiling. A vicious black fluid ran in narrow streams from the empty shelves, flowing down into the central emptiness. It looked like ink. Sheets of paper ran from above disappearing into the apparently bottomless pit. The thing about bottomless pits, said Placeholder, is they aren't ever. <clears throat> Even as I walked gingerly to the edge. This is a metaphor, right? The descend into madness? Her companions joined her. It's a metaphor for progression, said Placeholder. For a transition, for the acquisition of deeper knowledge. It's a hole, said Okori. She stepped in front of them, smiled brightly, and then stepped back into nothingness. They watched her fall, their linked hands and stepped in, and after her, the door closed. That seems like a good stopping point. Looks like next we get to learn what the black bots are. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!